So this experiment is about determining the order of reaction and rate constant for the reaction between malachite green and hydroxyl ions. So we look at some background theory, consider how this impacts the experimental protocol, consider the data analysis and finish up with some discussion. So in a previous lab we looked at the iodide persulfate reaction and to simplify this reaction we use the isolation method where we had one of the reagents in large excess. Since this reaction is in large excess, we said that the reaction simplified to a pseudo first order reaction and we explained that the integrated rate law form of this gave us the equation shown. Log of the concentration of persulfate at time t is equal to minus k prime t plus log of the initial concentration of persulfate. Where k prime is a pseudo first order rate constant that we can determine from a plot of log of concentration versus time. Once we know the pseudo first order rate constant k prime, we can determine k, the true second order rate constant, knowing that k prime is equal to k times iodide. So that was the approach we used the last time, and we're going to use it again in this lab, where we have malachite green reacting with hydroxyl ions uh, to form product. Uh, we're going to put one of the reagents, the hydroxyl ions, in vast excess, and we'll be able to assume pseudo first order conditions. So malachite green is a very strongly coloured dye, a green dye, and when it reacts with hydroxyl ions, the colour disappears. It forms a, a, a colourless solution. So the rate of this reaction, like any reaction, is k times the concentration of the products, each raised to some power. To simplify this rate, in other words, to reduce, to remove some of the terms from it, in our experiment we're going to have the hydroxyl ions in large excess. So we'll have one of the reagents, the hydroxyl ions, in large excess, and just as we explained for the last experiment, that means that we can simplify this experiment to pseudo first order conditions. We're going to assume alpha is equal to 1, which means that we can ex determine the pseudo first order rate constant k prime as before from a plot of log of the dye concentration against time. Now in this experiment we're not actually going to measure the dye concentration directly but we're going to measure the absorbance because malachite green as I mentioned is a strongly coloured dye, green dye, so if we measure how the absorbance changes over time, well because absorbance is related to concentration that means we'll be measuring how the concentration changes over time indirectly. So from the plot as I mentioned before we can determine K prime. So for each concentration of hydroxyl ions, and we'll do several for a reason we'll explain in a minute, we're going to plot the log of absorbance of the dye against time and determine the slope, uh, which was minus k prime. Okay, so last week we said that uh, when we expanded out the reaction again, we said, well, let's assume beta is equal to 1 as well. This time we're not going to assume beta is equal to 1. This time we're actually going to determine what beta is. And if we look, when we simplified the full rate law into pseudo first order conditions, we can see that k prime is equal to k times the concentration of hydroxide ions to the power of beta. If I get the log of both sides and expand that out using the first rule of logs shown on the right hand side, this gives me this expression. Log k prime is equal to log k plus log hydroxide ion concentration to the power of beta. But this, I can now use the second rule of log shown, log a to the power of n is equal to n log a. This allows me to bring down the beta in front of the log, and I get the second equation shown, which we can relate to the equation of a straight line. This means that if we plot log k prime on our y-axis against log of hydroxide ion concentration on our x-axis, the slope of this line will be beta. So this is how we can determine beta. So in our experiment, we're going to have to do this experiment several times for several different concentrations of hydroxide ion, measure the pseudo first order rate constant k prime, and plot this graph to determine beta. So to determine beta, that's what we're going to do, uh, as I've just mentioned. We can also determine k, the rate constant, the true second order rate constant, because again, we can say we know that k prime is equal to k times hydroxide ion concentration, we're going to find that beta is equal to 1, so this relates to the equation y is equal to mx plus c, where the slope of the line uh, where k prime is our y-axis and hydroxide ion concentration is our x-axis, the slope will be the true second order rate constant k. 
Okay, so in the lab, how do we actually achieve this? Well, malachite green is a strongly coloured dye, so its absorption spectrum is shown. We can see it absorbs there about 650 nanometers, nice strong peak. And as this dye reacts, it's going to um, uh, get, uh, it's going to discolor or, or it's going to lose its colour, so the absorbance is going to decrease over time. So if we measure the absorbance at the lambda max as a function of time, that's going to give us an idea of how quickly this dye is being used up. We're going to complete the experiment at several different concentrations of hydroxide ion, so we can have that plot where we can determine beta, um, and that will allow us to work out uh, all of the parameters in this reaction. So how will we analyze our data? Well, the first thing is to determine K prime from all of our hydroxide ion concentration experiments. So we're going to plot pseudo first order rate plots where we plot the log of absorbance against time uh, for each hydroxide ion concentration experiment. We take five or six points from our absorbance data and that will allow us to determine K prime for each concentration. The second thing is to determine beta. We know for each concentration of hydroxide ion what K prime is, so we can get the log of those values and complete a log log plot. Uh, this will allow us to determine beta, as described. And finally, we know again hydroxide ion K prime from the first part of the experiment, so we'll be able to work out um, K by plotting K prime against hydroxide ion concentration. And it's convenient to pool data across the class, um, so we get several data points for these plots. So in the discussion, then you can compare your value that you get given these Arrhenius factors. And to do this, you're going to need to know what reaction temperature you used and the Arrhenius equation. And you might just mention why we don't actually need to know the actual concentration of the dye, rather just, rather just use the absorbance um, in completing this experiment.